All right, homework 29, we're doing the sum, difference, and product of two functions. So we're going to do s plus t of x, s times t of x, and s minus t of 4. We're going to put the 4 in for the x and evaluate the function. So if we're going to do s plus t, we're going to take our s function, which is 3x plus 6. We're going to add our t function, which is 4x. Since we're adding, I really don't need the parentheses, but I'll put them there for fun. And then all we're going to do is simplify that as much as we can. So we're just going to combine our like terms. 3x plus 4x would give me 7x plus 6. And that's going to be the first answer that we're going to put in. On the next one, we're taking s times t. So we're going to take the 3x plus 6 times our 4x. And so on this one, we end up using our distributive property. 3x times 4x is 12x to the second power, 12x squared. 6 times 4x, positive 24x. Those aren't like terms. I can't combine them. So that's really all I can do to solve that one. The third part, there's a couple different ways to do it. I usually like to do things in the same order I do all the rest of the stuff in. So I would probably just do the s minus t first. So if I take 3x plus 6 and I minus my 4x, I have to distribute my negative out. So 3x plus 6 minus 4x would give me negative x plus 6. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute the 4 in for my x's and evaluate my answer at x equals 4. So if I put a 4 in for my x, I get negative 4 plus 6 which gives me an answer of 2. I also could have done that third part by putting the 4 into each of my functions and then subtracting my two answers. So if I would put a 4 up here, 3 times 4 is 12, 12 plus 6 is 18. If I put a 4 in for that x, 4 times 4 is 16. And then if I take s minus t, 18 minus 16, hey, I get the same answer too. So either way works when you're doing that evaluation. So number two, first part we're going to do is s plus t of x. So if I take my s, that's the x cubed, plus my t, that's 3x squared, wants me to add those two things, but they're not like terms, so I really can't add them. So I'm just going to have x cubed plus 3x squared. There's nothing I can do with that to simplify it. And then they have s minus t. So I'm going to take the x cubed. I'm going to subtract my 3x squared. And again, since they're not like terms, I'm just going to get x cubed minus 3x squared. And then I'm going to take s times t of negative 1. So if I do s times t, I'm going to take x cubed times 3x squared. So 1x cubed times 3x to the second would give me 3x to the fifth power. Evaluating that at negative 1, 3 times negative 1 to the fifth power. Negative 1 to the fifth power is still negative 1, and negative 1 times 3 would be negative 3 for my answer. On the third one, if I take s times t, x plus 5 times 2x squared, I would end up with 2x cubed plus 10x squared. Not much else I can do with that. And if I do x plus 5 plus 2x squared, not really a whole lot I could do with that other than I could put it in the best order. <laughs> not that you have to. 2x squared plus x plus 5, right? Since I don't have any like terms that I can combine. 
And then we're going to do our subtraction. So again, on that one with the subtraction, I don't really have any like terms. I'm going to have negative 2x squared plus x plus 5. But then I want to evaluate it at 4. So I need to take negative 2 times 4 squared plus 4 plus 5. 4 squared is 16 times negative 2. Negative 32. I'll add the 4 and the 5 first just because I can. Negative 32 plus 9 would give me negative 23. Now that one might actually have been shorter just to put the 4 in up here and subtract. Be careful on the subtraction ones if you do have a binomial or a trinomial that you use your distributive property and change all of your signs. We only had monomials so we didn't have to worry about it. The next one wants us to evaluate f divided by g of negative 5. So basically I'm putting this into a fraction, the f on top and the g on the bottom. So 2 plus x times negative 4 plus x over negative 2 minus x. We're then going to evaluate it at negative 5, so we're going to put negative 5 in for each of our x's. So 2 plus a negative 5 would be negative 3. Negative 4 plus negative 5 would be negative 9. On the bottom, 2 minus a negative 5 means I, or negative 2 minus a negative 5 means I have to add my 5, so I would get 3. I could reduce here or I could multiply and reduce. I'd get positive 27 thirds or 9 when I simplify that, right? That's part of my answer because it wants us to find f divided by g of 5, but then it wants you to find all the values that are not in the domain. The other day we talked about the domain of a fraction and that the denominator of your fraction can't equal 0, so your negative 2 minus x can't equal 0. If I move my x over, since it says not, I don't need the not equal to sign. Negative 2 is the only value that I can't have in the bottom of my fraction or I have a 0 down there, right? So number five, same kind of thing. I'm going to do f over g. So I'm just going to make my fraction. <laughs> I'm going to plug negative two in for each of my x's. Smoosh them all in there. So negative nine plus negative two would be negative eleven. And then negative 2 plus 3 would be 1. Well, that makes the top easy. <laughs> On the bottom, 9 minus a negative 2 is 11. And negative 2 minus 2 is negative 4. So on the bottom, we have negative 44. And so if we have a negative 11 over a negative 44, we can simplify that into 1 fourth. The second part, what values are not in the domain? This one, we have two different values. 9 minus x can't be equal to 0, and x minus 2 can't be equal to 0. So. On the first one, if I solve that, x can't be equal to 9. positive 9, right? And on my second one, x can't be equal to 2. two. So if your x is negative, it's easier to move the x over. Otherwise, you could move your number over and divide by negative 1. You still get the same numbers, hopefully.
Number six then, we're going to do F over G again, so we don't have to rearrange our fraction, but we're going to put 4 in there. 3 times 4 squared minus 5 over 2 times 4 minus 7. So, figure out that top number for me. Forty-three. And on the bottom, one. So we get forty-three for our answer there. What values are not in the domain in this case? The two x minus seven can't be equal to zero. So if you solve that, you would get positive seven over two. They just don't want you to forget about that domain thing. Number seven. <laughs> this is called the composition of functions. It's when you have more than one equation and it's read w of u of 5. But what we really do is we work our way backwards. We're going to put the 5 into the u expression first. So we're going to just do u of 5. If we do u of 5, it means we're going to put the 5 in for the x's of our u expression. So we're going to do 2 times 5 minus 2. And we're going to find that answer. is 8. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take the 8 and put it into the W expression. So we're going to do W of 8. If we do W of 8, we're going to have minus and in parentheses the 8 squared. So if I figure that out, I'm going to get negative 64. Negative 64. That's going to be my first answer. Whoops, I'm trying to write the 4 and not the 6. Negative 64 is going to be our first answer. Okay. Now on the second one, they're just going to do it the opposite way around. I'm going to start by doing the 5 into the W expression. So W of 5, what would I do for W of 5? Whoops, you're going to use the W one first. Oh, 8. So, whoops, which one oh. is, what does the W expression say? Oh, negative. Oh, minus. So, I'm going to have minus, and in for the W, I'm going to put? 5. 5 squared then, right? And I'm going to figure out that answer. Negative 25. Negative 25. Now I'm going to take that answer and I'm going to put it into the u expression. So I'm going to do u of negative 25. How would I do u of negative 25? Negative 25 squared. What's the u expression say? Here's the u expression, right? Yeah. So I'm putting the negative 25 into the u expression this time. So I'm going to do two, oh, 2 2 times negative 25 minus 2. Because it's 2x minus 2, right? And I'm putting the negative 25 in for the x. 2 times minus 2? Minus 2. So what do you get when you answer when you do 2 times negative 25 minus 2? Negative 52. 
So number eight, if I'm going to do Q of R of four, where should I start? first, which means I'm going to do 4 squared plus 5. So 4 squared plus 5 would give me an answer of? 21. 21. I'm not done because now I've got to put the 21 into my Q function. So Q of 21. Square root of 21 plus 4 would then give me the square root of 25, which is 5 for my answer. Second part of that. This time I'm going to start with Q of 4. So Q of 4 would give me the square root of 4 plus 4, which is the square root of 8. Now you could simplify the square root of 8, but since you're in the middle of the problem, I would just leave it like that, and at the end, if you need to simplify, you could. So I'm going to do R of the square root of 8. So I have to do the square root of 8 squared plus 5. And if you do the square root of 8 squared, you get 20. just the 8, right? Because the square root and the square and cancel each other out. 8 plus 5 would be 13 for my answer. of negative 2. So putting my negative t in, or my negative 2 into my t, negative 4 times negative 2 plus 3 would give me 11. 11. And then putting 11 into my s function. So negative 3 times 11 plus 1 gives me negative 32. Negative 32. Second part of that, putting the negative 2 into the s function first. So negative 3 times negative 2 plus 1. Seven. It's 7. Putting 7 into my t function, so negative 4 times 7 plus 3. composition of those two functions, just think of it that you have to go backwards, work your way backwards to get your answer. <coughs> 10, 11, and 12, we're doing the composition of two functions, domain and range. So I'm taking f of g and when I do that, what I have to be able to do is make it all the way across from one side to the other side. When I'm listing my domain, the only possible values, if my board didn't move, that could be in the domain are the ones that are in your starting domain. When you do your range, the only possible answers you can have are the ones that are in your ending range. So what you're trying to do is see if you can get all the way across from one end to the other says we have to use set notation, so I'm going to start with my set symbol. 3 goes to 9, 9 goes to 8. I went all the way across, 3 goes in my domain, the 8 goes in my range. 4 goes to 7, 7 goes to 8. Went all the way across, 4 gets added to my domain, 
the eight's already in my range, I don't need to write it down more than once. Five goes to six, six goes to eight. Five goes in my domain, the eight's already in my range. Seven goes to five, however, there isn't a five over another function, so I can't continue. I'm just going to ignore that that's even there. It doesn't work. Eight goes to one. There isn't a one over there, so I can get rid of that. Nine goes to one. There's not a one over there. I can get rid of that. My domain is three, four, and five. So My range is eight. Off there, there's some, a gentleman in the front lobby selling scented candles to their home Scented candles. So, number 11. My domain. Am I going to use the zero? Yep. If I use zero in my domain, what am I going to put in for my range? The four. Zero went to two, two went to four. Am I going to use the three? Nope. Nope. Three went to four, but there's no four. Can't do that one. Am I going to use the four? Yes. Yes. So if I use the four in my domain, what am I going to have in my range? Nine. Four goes to five, and five goes to nine. Five. Am I going to use the five? Yep. And if I have a domain of five, my range is going to be nine, which I already have. Am I going to use the nine? No. Nope. Nine goes to four, and I'm stuck. So my domain, zero, four, and five. My range, four, and nine. going to use the one in my domain? Nope. nope. Goes to zero and there's not a zero. The three? Yes. Yes. Three goes to eight and then the eight goes to four. So I'm going to add four to my range. How about the four? Nope. Nope. Goes to zero and there's not a zero over there. How about the six? Yes. Yes. Six goes in my domain. Six goes to eight and eight goes to four. I already have four. How about the eight? Yep, eight goes to three, there is a three, three goes to four, so we're going to add the eight, but we don't need to add another four. How about the nine? Nope, that goes to zero. So, three, six, and eight in my domain, four in my range. Almost can fit all that. 13, 14, and 15 is basically just reading a graph. My miles driven is my X values, my cost in dollars, my Y values. So I have two pricing options, option A and option B. I'm going to rent a car. Here, my starting price is $30, and depending on how many miles I drive, my price increases. Here, my starting price is $60, and it's always $60, so it doesn't matter how many miles I drive. We're going to have four questions to answer to on each part. If Pablo drives the rental car 75 miles, which option costs me more? 75 miles. Well, they don't have it marked, but hopefully we know 75 is halfway between 60 and 90. So at 75 miles, this one is going to cost me $45, and this one always costs me $60. Which one costs me more? Option B. Option B. How much more does it cost? $15. 60 minus 45? $15. For what number of miles do the two options cost the same? Well, where they intersect is where they're the same. They both cost $60. How many miles is that? 150, right? It's straight above the 150. If I could draw a straight. 150. If Pablo drives less than this amount, meaning less than the 150, which one costs me less? 
You could use any of these numbers less than 150. Which one's less? A is going to be the one I run into first, right? Option A. Number 14 then. Sam makes 200 minutes of long distance calls for the month. Which plan costs me less? So I, option B is going to cost me less. How much less does it cost than the other plan? $4. $4. This one's going to cost me $16 and that one's going to cost me $20. So $20 minus $16, $4. For what number of long, <laughs> long distance minutes do the two plans cost the same? 120. 120, right here where they intersect. And if the time spent on long distance calls is less than the 120 minutes, which one costs me less? Plan, Plan. which one do you say? A. a. Right, that's the one I run into first. A is going to cost me less than B. If I'm less than 120 minutes. <coughs> and the last one helps if I have the graph on there. Tammy is renting a car. Tammy drives a rental car 120 miles. Which one costs me more at 120 miles? Option A. Option A is going to cost me more. How much more is it going to cost me? <coughs> this one's going to cost me 50. This one's going to cost me 65, right? So it's going to cost me $15 more. For what number of miles do the two options cost the same? 60. If Tammy drives less than this amount, less than the 60, which one costs me less? Option A. So if I go here, option A is the one I run into first, so that means it costs less. And that would be my answer. All right, that should be the next.